In this video, I'm gonna walk you through our three, two, one workflow to ensure that you never, ever lose photos. So look, we're all getting busy again with weddings and events. In this video, I'm gonna give you a bulletproof data management workflow to ensure that you never lose a client's images, ever. Let's not even go there. This video is in depth, but it's gonna be worth its weight in gold. So bookmark it, share it with your team, reference it as needed. And if we do have updates, I'll create a new addition to this video. So here's the gist. We're gonna create three copies of our source data. We're then gonna create two backups to redundant drives locally. When completed, we're gonna create one offsite copy via cloud or offsite storage. This is the three, two, one workflow. Now let me walk you through step-by-step step on how we do it. Step number one, we need to create three on-site backups. So our primary business with Linager of Photography is wedding and portrait photography. This means that we are always at different destinations, shooting and working on location. We rarely shoot in the studio. So the first thing that we do is all of our primary team members, so lead and second shooters are required to shoot on cameras that have dual card slots with in-camera backup. So look, you wanna make sure that number one, you're shooting raw, and number two, you go into the menu and you select the option to make sure that you're recording redundant data. So the same image goes to both cards. This immediately gives us two sources for original data coming straight out of the camera. Let's talk for a moment now about the actual memory cards that we use. So we prefer to use SanDisk Extreme Pro memory cards just for the balance between reliability as well as cost effectiveness. They are very reliable cards and they're offered at a good price point. What I like to do is I like to use my SD card as the primary card. So this way, any ratings or anything that I apply to images is gonna be on that primary card, which is then gonna be backed up and it's gonna go into our workflow. For the secondary card, well, at least on a 5D4, we're using CF cards, but this is gonna change with mirrorless as we go to dual SD or other types of data formats. The main note here that I like to make is that with the primary SD cards, well, Really the goal here is to never remove the memory cards from the camera and then to simply keep the camera with you. So ideally, you're gonna choose a memory card size that will allow you to get through the entire day without swapping. So I would go with a 256 gig primary as well as a 256 gig secondary card. Now, I, I know there's gonna be a lot of talk and probably controversy about this. People are gonna talk about how, well, I like to shoot on multiple 32 gig cards, so that way if I lose one or if something gets stolen, I still have you know, the rest of the, the day. Well, here's the thing, is that the most likely way you're going to lose or have something stolen is by removing it from the camera. This is probably the greatest risk that you face on a shoot day, is removing the cards from the camera and trying to store and organize them in other places. So if you remove that from the workflow, all you have to do is protect your camera. Keep the camera with you at all times. Use a strap, keep it around your neck, as well as never leave it in your car. One other quick tip on this side, a 256 gig SD card is relatively inexpensive, but a 256 gig CF card is quite expensive. So if you'd like to save a bit on this side, then grab smaller. So this is a 64 gig CF card, which is offered at a much better price point per gigabyte than say a 256 gig card. And I would say at that point, it's an okay compromise to leave the primary card in the camera throughout the day and swap out the backup card with smaller cards throughout. This also will alleviate those of you that do worry about having everything just on two cards. Okay, so at this point we have two sources for original data. We now need our third. This is where the Narbox 2.0 comes in. And what you have with this device is essentially a hard drive and computer that goes right into your pocket. It's weatherproof, it's shock resistant, it's rugged, it's a beast. But even better than that is that the backup is fast and it's easy. All you're gonna do is take your primary card and pop it into the SD card slot. Now, once again, you'll want to use the primary card in case you have any starred or rated images. So pop it into the SD card slot and the NAR box is gonna back up and verify all the images. 
If you're using any other card type, you can use one of the two USB-C ports to connect an adapter. It's gonna back up and verify. Now here's the other great part about this, is that you can attach a secondary working SSD drive directly to the NAR box. This is the SanDisk 2 terabyte SSD, and it's my primary working drive. It's fast enough via USB-C to work off of with your Lightroom catalogs, so I use it both in studio as well as on destination shoots. I can plug this right into the port, and then using the multi-destination copy option, the Narbox is gonna create a second backup on the external hard drive as well as on its internal drive. So popping in that single SSD, I get two copies. When I get back to the studio, this is ready to go. I can import all the images directly in the Lightroom and begin working. Now I need to pause to point out that the Narbox 2.0 is kind of a big deal because previously to get to a third on-site backup, we'd usually be bringing our iPad or our laptop to each job and on location. So this means that we had to carry around extra gear, we also have to manage that gear. We've had our laptops broken, stolen, or just left in the car and forgotten. On top of that, it's a pain having to plug in the laptop, get your memory card reader, and upload cards one by one. So yes, at a $500 starting point, the Narbox isn't cheap, but there's a huge difference in overall workflow and quality of life here. Our teams have a rugged and reliable backup device that fits right into their case and easily into their pocket. In addition to all of that, if you have a break during your shoot or event, you can actually pair the Narbox with the Selects app on your mobile device. And the Narbox 2.0 will allow you to cull, rate, and even keyword files right on the Narbox, as well as begin pushing them to Dropbox for immediate sharing or post-production right inside of Lightroom CC. This is an amazing tool in a world where so many vendors want immediate images for social media sharing. But let's save the details of all that for another video. And also I wanna mention that if you'd like to stick with your laptop or your iPad as that third on-site backup option, by all means. I'm gonna show you what works best for us and what we do in our workflow. You guys choose what works best for you and what fits your budget. You're simply gonna replace the steps that we've discussed with the Narbox with your own laptop or iPad and everything else in this video is still gonna apply. Let's go ahead and move to step two. So this is the working drive backup and I've labeled it as optional because this part is beautiful. See, if you used the multi-destination backup in step one and you already backed up to your actual working SSD, once you're back at the studio, you're ready to work right off the drive. If the images, however, are still on the NAR box, you're gonna simply connect this via USB-C and you're gonna upload all the data in one transfer. So gone are the days of having to manage the mess of multiple memory cards or using things like our Lexar multi-card readers. Okay, so step number three, we need to back up to a NOS. This is to complete our two in the three, two, one workflow. So once we have the images onto the working SSD or the local computer hard drive, we're then gonna create a quick backup to a NOS storage device. Now our studio is large enough that we require a pretty crazy custom network and storage solution, but our favorite off-the-shelf solution for all of this is Synology, which will work for almost every one of you, even larger studios. Your NOS should be set to mirror data. This means that when you copy to your NOS, you have a redundant backup built into that network attached storage device. Okay, so one more cool tip here, because you can back up directly from the Narbox's root directory to your NOS, rather than having to go through your local hard drive. So all you're gonna do is connect and back up via Wi-Fi or via Ethernet directly to your NOS from the NAR box. Use user-defined folder presets to allow you to skip the computer entirely. Just use the NAR box's screen and buttons to back up directly to the NOS. Doing this is not only faster, it frees you up to again, begin working on the images right away on your primary machine. So I'm gonna throw a link in the description of this video for exact instructions on this step because it goes a little bit beyond what we can cover in this video. Okay, so now you have two studio copies, one of which has redundant backup. So technically we have three. 
Another tip here, when we format our original cards, we leave the data on the SD cards until we've confirmed images are on the local drive as well as the local redundant NOS. If you're in a studio with multiple shooters, allow only one person the ability to format SD cards. That one data management person, they must verify both data points before formatting cards. This way, nobody else in your studio can format a card and later say, well, I didn't know, or I thought it was already backed up or whatever excuse they might have. Only one person in our studio is allowed to format memory cards. This means that if a shooter discovers images on a card, they can't use it until they've taken it back to the data manager to clear and format. Okay, so step four is cloud or offsite storage. So to complete our three to one workflow, we need an offsite backup. You can begin to download to any offsite or cloud storage platform of your choice with your original files. Now this is gonna take quite a bit of time and it's usually gonna be completed as you edit your catalog of photos. So I wanna give you another option here. If you have a decently quick workflow, meaning you're turning around jobs within a week or so and you aren't waiting months to finish and deliver, then I would suggest a second option. Treat either the NAR box or your SSDs or SDs as your offsite backups. Simply leave the images on one of these devices and separate it from your office backups. So let's jump to that step five, the archival process. And for archival, we prep a final folder that's set to 00, zero originals. This houses all the original raw files that were kept and are gonna be used for final images. Then we have a folder called 01 print. This is all the final images exported for print use. We have another folder called 02 web. It's all the final images exported for web use with watermarks and also a third folder 03 rejected. This contains all of the JPEGs for the rejected raw images. So all the images we're not keeping, we reset them out and export them as JPEGs just in case we need them for anything. Then carefully delete only the raw rejects from the catalog. We're using Lightroom for this. Now the folder is given a date followed by the client's names and a description of the shoot. It's ready for archival. And at this point we'll begin two transfers of the final archive ready project. One copy goes to the cloud for offsite storage. One copy is gonna to go to our NOS for completed projects. This way, the NOS-based copy remains readily available for the next 12 to 24 months in case we need it. You can choose the actual duration, but we found that once the images are delivered, 12 months on the NOS is usually enough. If you already created a cloud backup in step four, well, this is where you can go back and delete it after the final archive ready project has been uploaded. This way you're not eating up tons of your cloud storage. Now, like I said, we keep that project on our NOS for about a year and then we prep them for long-term archival via external hard drives. So I wanna say that's it, but I know that that was a lot. This was super in depth, but I'm hoping that it helps each of you to create an efficient yet bulletproof data management workflow. We're gonna make this an ongoing series. So if there's any major updates, what I'll do is I'll create a new edition. So this is our 2020 edition. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you can actually follow with these updates. Meanwhile, I'm gonna include links to all the products that we mentioned in this video in the description below. Hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.